to the Code Prep Podcast, the podcast that shows you how you can get into tech. Today, we have one of our bonus episodes for you. Valerie and I are both graduates of a coding boot camp, and we talk about how to survive a coding boot camp today. So, before we get into how to survive a coding boot camp, let's talk about why you would want to do a coding boot camp. So Valerie, start us off and tell us about your experience and why you decided to do a coding boot camp. Excellent. So I had some options. Uh, I knew that I needed to sort of pivot and, and shift career paths. I was miserable with all the things that I'd done the last 20 years. And um, now my situation is very unique in that I have a useless undergraduate degree and $80,000 in student loan debt. And I know none of our <laughs> listeners can, uh, can empathize <laughs> with student loan debt and the inability to make enough money to pay said debt. Uh, so I looked at doing a computer science degree. You know, since I already have an undergrad, it would have been a year and a half or so of extra courses to get that dual degree. But I started digging into the extra math courses and, 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 and then adding up the cost, even for a community college. And it got a little overwhelming. So, um, I started researching different ways and, you know, I, I looked at some uh, self-guided online courses. I made it a week on free code camp before I realized that I wasn't even progressing because that's not who I am as a person. I don't do well without structure and accountability. So uh, I settled on the Georgia Tech Coding Bootcamp, which was a fabulous investment, but that, you know, basically lack of finances, lack of time, and looking for another way to quickly get where I needed to be was what sort of led me to a boot camp. How did you find yours? Um, I actually used to be a programmer for many, many years, did Lotus Notes development, retired, then decided I wanted to get back into programming. And then like you, I decided at my age, going back and getting a college degree, another college degree in computer science was, a complete and utter waste of time. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Bless you. So um, what I decided to do was I looked into it and I did a coding boot camp in early 2015. So it was almost three years, three and a half years, almost four years ago that I did mine. And I decided it was the fastest path possible for me mm -hmm. to get back into tech and to get into programming. And that's why I decided to do it. Um, now, once we decided to do that, paying for a coding boot camp can be expensive. You mentioned having, you know, um, student debt from your your current degree, everything mm -hmm. else like that. How did you go about financing? And then, do you mind saying roughly how much it costs for your coding boot camp? Yeah, absolutely. So but part of why I chose Georgia Tech was one, the Georgia Tech name. It it means something, you know, especially in my family where my grandfather went to the North Avenue Trade School and you know, um so but two, um they they are so reasonably priced. <laughs> um I did payments uh installments instead of paying it up front. There's a discount if you pay up front, but I ended up spending about ninety five hundred total uh over the course of my six month part time program. Worth every penny when you look at my earning potential before, what I'm actually making today, and my earning potential moving forward, sound investment. But we did not have, I don't know if this sounds familiar to anyone out there, I didn't just have almost 10 grand lying around, not earmarked for any purpose, so weird. Um, so I freely admit, after looking at all of my options, uh, I opened up baby's first credit card I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm unlike a lot of people uh, in my age bracket. I never had credit cards through college because I know who I am. I'm very self-aware and I knew at 20 that if I had credit cards, I would just have tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt. So I opened up my first one to pay for my boot camp, and I would just sort of do an installment and pay it down as my husband got paid and as I cleaned houses and babysat for people. And I had a part-time marketing work from home job. As I got that paycheck, I'd pay down the credit card a bit and just sort of did what it took to get through it. <laughs> it was maxed by the end of those six months, but I paid it off. 
Uh, what about you? What what were your financing options for the full-time program? Well, the cost of my cutting boot camp was literally almost double yours. Um, mine was $17,780, which is the equivalent of like almost a year at a junior college. Um, you know, so it was quite expensive. Um, Bank of Mom came in handy. <laughs> Um, I was able to pay her back within a year based on, you know, my increased salary that I got coming out of it. But if you're looking at other options besides doing a credit card or the bank of mom or some other mechanism for paying for a coding boot camp, we've created a video and we'll include links below um, this video in the show notes on what we created on how to finance your coding boot camp, and we give you quite a few different ranges of how to prepare for it and how to finance it. So now that you've decided to do a coding boot camp, figure out how to financing. The next thing we need to work about is studying skills. You know, for me, I did a coding boot camp at 51, so it's been a long time since I've sat into um, an environment where I was being taught. So, Valerie, what was it like for you to prepare? going back in and learning again so this is i again i'm an interesting interesting <laughs> background i was that kid always that um i endured the same lecture from every teacher who ever cared uh over the years which was valerie why are you a c student you have so much potential you're so smart why are your grades so crappy um i never really had to study to get a's on tests and then i didn't do homework hence my c's um everything Part of what I love about um, just tech in general is that this is the first job I've ever had in my life where I'm not bored and it doesn't come easily. I don't, it's not just handed to me on a silver platter. Um, so I didn't prepare to learn again because I naively just assumed like everything I've ever done, the, you know, information would be presented to me. I would immediately understand it and be able to take it in, synthesize it, regurgitate it correctly, first try, that's, uh, so the biggest actually you know, piece of advice I would give to people about the Start a Coding Bootcamp is one, look at the curriculum, look at everything they intend to teach you and start reading well before your first day of class. Um, a lot of them assign pre-work and things to sort of get your, your toes wet uh, as far as the material's concerned. Take that to heart, take it seriously, and I, I wish I could go back to, you know, a month before I started my boot camp and have started reading about um, not any particular language, but just coding logic in general and APIs. And I wish someone had made me read an article called How the Internet Works <laughs> <laughs> before I started my boot camp. <laughs> so um, I, I pretty much realized a few weeks into my boot camp that I didn't know how to study when things don't come easily. And it was a very slow uh, adaptation over the course of six months, figuring out how to learn really for the first time. And uh, again, if you're if you're on the precipice of a boot camp, please start studying now, even if you think it's going to come easily, even if you have previous experience, please start studying now. <laughs> Did you, I mean, you, you say I did it at 51, which is not exactly like I did it at 101. Like, <laughs> and also you strike me as a kind of person who's always learning anyway. Was it that big a culture shock to get back into a, an educational program? I don't think it was a big culture shock. I think the biggest shock was um, almost everybody in my class was old enough to be my kid. Um, yeah. You know, so they're like, you know, all these 20 year old, you know, guys that were in my class and they were like, what are you doing here? And you know, it's, it's nice to be able to hang out with them and, and find out what's going on in the world today from them. Um, but then also being able to learn and then also show them that you're better at it than they are, um, which was also <laughs> a nice thing to do. Um, <laughs> talking about doing a coding boot camp, I did a full time coding boot camp. You did a part-time coding boot camp, mm -hmm. right? So my full-time coding boot camp was three months long. Most full-time coding boot camps are three months long. Sometimes you might see one as four months, but for rule of thumb, if you're doing a full-time coding boot camp, it's going to be three months long. Um, that's quite a bit of time to take out. You know, it's a quarter of a year. 
uh, you're not working because you're doing this on a full-time basis. My coding bootcamp was unique in that most coding bootcamps are like nine to five um, if they're full-time and they're Monday through Friday. Mine was 12 hours a day, six days a week. So it basically consumed all of your life um, whatever you wanted to do, you couldn't do for three months. Everything had to be put on hold. There, mm -hmm. you know, even if you wanted to do minor tour, um, chores like, you know, laundry, cooking, uh, stuff like that, um, it was a challenge to do all of that because you were doing it on a full time basis. So if you're doing a coding boot camp, you have to be aware of that. In a minute, we'll talk about how to prepare for that and, and do it. But Valerie, tell us about your experience of doing the coding bootcamp from a part-time basis. So part-time is fascinating. If you have a full-time job, the part-time bootcamp feels like it's the full-time program, but for six months, uh, especially if you have the kind of job. I, um, I was lucky in that I only had a part-time job that was work from home, very flexible, but I did have two children who are in of themselves full-time jobs. Uh, at the time, I lived in a very large home that if you didn't clean it regularly, it would just get out of control so quickly that suddenly, oh my God, I live in a dumpster fire. When did this happen? Um, so I had, you know, I had a lot of the stay-at-home mom responsibilities that I'd had before, plus a part-time job, plus the part-time boot camp. So for me, it felt overwhelming enough on some level I feel like a full-time program would have been easier on me if we had been able to, you know, have that extra money to pay for full-time daycare so that I could go to a building all day, every day, away from the kids, away from the house, not have to have a part-time job and have studied all day. I don't know. It might've actually been easier in some ways. However, if you do have to have that job to pay the bills to, you know, pay for your boot camp for all those things, the part-time program is great. Um, for me, it was uh, about three hours a night, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then all of my Saturday mornings. I say three hours. We had office hours before and after, so I ended up being on campus from maybe five to ten on Tuesday and Thursday, sometimes earlier. <laughs> and I watched I watched my full-time students come in early and stay late. It's, I don't, I don't think it matters which program you're in. You're going to end up showing up early and staying late and studying extra because you can't do the work while you're learning how to do the work. Yeah. And it's vastly easier to do the work if you're at a table with other people who are learning or with TAs or instructors. It's, it's a huge time investment either way. For me, with the obligation of children and a part-time job and the added expense that full-time daycare would have been the part-time program was the only program that made sense logistically that i mean i don't know everyone's situation is so snowflakey um there's no right or wrong answer i think everyone just has to sit down look at their lifestyle look at their obligations and decide which one's going to work better but there's a lot to be said for three months of no social life, three months of full-time work, and then your future is ahead of you. Yep. It's it's definitely <laughs> definitely appealing. Having said that, it doesn't matter which program you choose, you have to be able to get outside support from someone. That's now, true. did you, through your full-time program, you, you mentioned things like laundry and dishes and just home maintenance were, were difficult. Were you able to find people to help you or, you know, um, ways to sort of deal with those things while you were in school? Um, it was challenging to do that because um, unlike you, I don't have the responsibility of a family. So it's just myself that I'm having to be responsible for. And instead of doing a program, um, you know, where you actually go to the, the place to see it, I did my coding bootcamp full time online. So all I had to do was to get up and go to my computer and be on my computer for 12 hours a day, six days a week. And then once the class was over, I was at home. Um, I was, you know, able to, you know, I didn't have to drive somewhere. I didn't have to commute. I didn't have to 
worry about anything. Um, but I had to still manage about, you know, food, you know, getting clothes done, which usually fell on Sunday because it was our free day. So I would put the laundry in and then code. And then when it was ready, I'd put it in the dryer and code some more. When it came out, I'd pull it out, put it on the floor, didn't even fold it, clean it, you know, put it away. And then yep. during the week, I would just pull things out of the pile to to wear every day. And then the following Sunday, repeat that same process. Um, and it was a little bit more of a challenge because since I did it online, the cutting boot camp was in California. So it was 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. their time. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So it was noon to midnight. So you ended up, you had to have basically breakfast or lunch eaten before noon, before you start. Um, and then they would break for lunch, you know, um, like around, what, 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, and mm -hmm. then they would be breaking for dinner at 7 p.m. California time, which is 10 p.m. your time, you know. So it would be like, okay, for one hour, I could like either cook something or jump in the car and go to a drive through So, you know, my health didn't do very well for that three months as a result of that. Um, but it gave me, you know, potential for a future and it was worth the, the, the cost of doing it. So what about for you? Oh my goodness. So I actually, I'm laughing because my children, um, it was just understood that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, because my husband had to leave work downtown and go all the way up to the suburbs where we lived then, to get them both and deal with them on my school days, it was just understood they were eating Wendy's on those days. They just, just <laughs> gonna happen. And if it was my day to cook, um, that was inevitably a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store and some frozen vegetables. Shut your mouth and eat it. You'll like it or you'll starve. Um, the, <laughs> the amount pizza, of junk food. pizza, <laughs> yeah, pizza, takeout Chinese, ordered in Indian food. That's we lived on junk for yep. six months. Um, so I was really lucky. Actually, the day I graduated, I posted a picture of me and my teammates. I had these two amazing women, um, Melanie and um, Kathy, that were my teammates through my boot camp. And, you know, we have a picture of we're raising our beers and we're done. And I posted this picture with a thank you note to everyone who helped me get through the boot camp. And I started out with my son, because without him entertaining his little sister as much as he did, I would not have had as much time to study. Um, as it was, so instead of, I had this great office. Oh my God. I called it the Val cave. I had this great <laughs> desk and four monitors and this comfy chair. And this was where I was going to do my work. Right? No, 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 no. What ended up happening is I put my laptop at the kitchen table so that I could turn on the TV slash babysitter and have like sort of a view of the house from where I sat. <laughs> <laughs> so I could study more and just sort of neglect my children and let them play Lord of the Flies, but but still be there in case they're actually setting something on fire. Um, I, I had to thank my mommy friends. I had a fair number of friends who either came and hung out with my daughter so I could go study upstairs in peace. Um, I had friends who work from home and have small children so I could go sit at their kitchen table with them and quietly work while our kids entertain each other, again, Lord of the Flies style, yay. Um, you know, there were just so many people who did little things without which I could not, I don't believe, have finished that program and actually learned anything. Um, I cannot stress enough the importance of finding community helpers. So, it, and it might be your friends, it might be your family. You know, I didn't have like a mom to take my kids and, you know, I couldn't send them to aunt grandma or to, to camp grandma, but I could call my sister and get a couple of hours of them with their aunt, you know, and it's not the same as like a week away or a weekend away, but it was a few hours to study. Um, I could send them to a neighbor's house to play with someone I trusted and it's a couple of hours here and there. Um, you're never going to find one person to do your laundry, do your dishes, watch your kids, do all the things that you're neglecting if you're studying. But if you reach out to your community, your tribe, your friends, your family, your acquaintances, and just say, hey, can anyone help with 5% of this? 
you'd be surprised how many people can ship in that 5% and eventually <laughs> you've got help. Yeah. Um, that's without which I could not have, I could not have done anything. And, and it, it's not just the practical. We talk a lot, you and I, in pragmatic terms because that's who we are. Uh, we think a lot about logistics and problems to be overcome. I can't emphasize enough how much I needed almost daily pep talks. <laughs> and so I had my big sister and my cousin Mindy and my best friend Jessica and a handful of people who, you know, Mindy lives in Florida. She couldn't come watch my kids so I could study. But almost every day when I would call her and say, man, I'm not getting this material as quickly as I feel like I should. This is so hard. I am overwhelmed. I am stressed. She was there to say, you're doing great. You've got this. Let me give you some creative problem solving strategies. Here's another time I'm going to remind you of where you overcame. Like these pep talks were priceless to me. The, the kind of help you're going to need comes in all forms, um, none of which is more valuable than the other, to, to be honest. <laughs> did, you, did you have those cheerleaders through your program? I did. Um, my family was very supportive of me. They were very encouraging. Um, they would be like, hey, you know, we're, we're, you know, in all of what you're doing, you know, we wish you the best. You know, let us know if there's anything we can do to help out. Um, so it was great to have that support. And if you're going to be successful in a coding bootcamp, you're going to need to have that level of support because you're just, it's almost impossible to do it by yourself, full time, part time, three months, six months. It's, it's impossible to do it all by yourself. You're going to need some level of support at some point during the process. But once you finish the process, the one thing that you want to do going to a coding boot camp is that you want to change careers. You want to get into something that hopefully is going to provide for you from a financial standpoint and it's going to provide a very secure future by having these skill sets. What was the job hunt process like for you after you graduated? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I stayed low level tipsy and or drunk for two weeks after I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you work so hard and then comes the day you're done and all you can think is now what you know like you um the job hunt is is interesting i'm probably going to share a link to a few talks that i've done uh on creative job hunting because i came out of my boot camp with a worthless resume a real sketch job history you know no one in my industry cares that i was a bar bouncer uh, for example um you know, I, I came out of my boot camp with a lot of sort of strikes against me, that whole stay at home mom time. Um, and, you know, it it was sort of terrifying <laughs> thinking about asking people for a job. I mean, the, the best advice I can give is one, never lie about what you can do and what you can't. I um, I was just thanking my boss the other day for just being who he is as a boss. Uh, as, as an immediate supervisor and the role that he's played in me learning. And we were laughing about the fact that I came in for my job interview and said, I can't do this job. I learn anything you ask me to learn, but I can't do this job. <laughs> so if you're looking for someone to hit the ground running and, and be self-sufficient, please move on. I wish you wouldn't though. I wish you'd teach me how to do this job. Yeah. And uh, they did and, and happily ever after. But, um, you know, don't, uh, I've heard some, really, really uh, duplicitous job hunt advice. One guy was telling me that what you should do if you've done a six month boot camp that covers certain things, instead of saying I did a six month boot camp and I have six months experience with everything, say that you have six months experience with HTML and six months experience with CSS and five months experience with Node and four months experience with SQL databases. And he's like, and it'll make people think you have more experience than you have. <laughs> And I, I just kind of looked at him and I was like, it'll make idiots think you have more experience than you have. And most recruiters are not in fact idiots. They'd like to get paid and they know they're not gonna get paid if they put you in front of an employer with this sketch description. <laughs> like, you can't, what? So um, I'll post some links to some creative job hunting strategies because I definitely, definitely got, um, got creative with how I went about finding 
lucrative work. Um, but mostly, you know, just accept that it's going to be asking out someone to the eighth grade formal all over again. You're going to get a lot of rejection, but eventually someone's going to say yes, and you're going to feel really good and hope you don't have a zit on your first day. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you have so much more experience and you, I mean, you, you come from such a vastly different background than do I, I can't imagine the job hunt after your boot camp was nearly that terrifying given your history. No, it wasn't that terrifying because I've, I've had a lot of experience interviewing for jobs and having jobs. So I was familiar with the process. So that was not a challenge for me. And one of the things that I did compared to a lot of people that graduated with me in my coding boot camp was I hustled. I hustled so much more than they did. I actually started submitting um, my resume to positions, you know, a week and a half, almost two weeks before I graduated. Um, and they basically tell you to wait until after you graduated. I'm like, nope, not waiting. Um, and I probably had sent out um, 40 plus resumes before mm -hmm. I graduated. Um, mm -hmm. I had talked to and um, met um, six different recruiters. Uh, here in Atlanta, recruiters are frequently used to get jobs. And I know in some parts of the country that isn't true. Um, and of those six, I narrowed it down to four that I liked um, and used. They had my resume and they were submitting my resume to companies above and beyond the like 40 plus that I applied mm -hmm. to afterwards. And then the after we graduated, we graduated on a Saturday. I took Sunday off, basically slept through Sunday to catch up. And Monday, I hit the ground running and I was probably sending out, you know, seven to 10 resumes applying to, for jobs every day, seven days a week. Uh, and then it, I started getting interviews my second week out of um, boot camp. Uh, and I interviewed with quite a few companies and I ended up with actually three job offers um, after like my third week. And then exactly one month to the day after I graduated, I started working at my job. So I got a job quicker than most people do when they come out of a coding boot camp because usually job search process is three months on average. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can take six months. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Um, I think mine just went faster because I had the previous coding boot camp and was familiar with the process. Plus, then I hustled more than anybody else. Um, because it, I paid all that money, like I said, double the amount that you paid. Um, so I needed to get a paycheck so I could start paying back the bank of mom sooner than later. So <laughs> that's why I did it. And I think doing a coding bootcamp, if you're looking to get into tech, is a great mechanism to get into tech. Um, so I yeah. encourage it. Yeah, no, my job hunt was longer. I graduated in February, but I anticipated the longer the longer search for me, uh, just based on some, you know, just my background. So I accepted a role as teaching assistant at my boot camp, which I felt like was a double whammy. One, a small paycheck, not anything to write home about, but something coming in. But two, there is no better way to learn than to teach. And there were definitely concepts that I sort of understood at a, at a low level. I, I, I understood, but I didn't really get some of the things I'd learned in my boot camp until I had to teach them. Uh, so that was definitely, you know, not a wasted amount of time. So I went ahead and signed a three month contract to be a teaching assistant, anticipating that longer job hunt. But, you know, with the February graduation, I went to my first networking event in October. And I went to networking events constantly because I was pretty sure that even with an ugly resume, if I could meet the right person, look at them in the eye, shake their hand, and tell them why they should look at me anyway, a chance. And, it, and as it turns out, that is how I got my job. I, I spoke at an event and then met people, looked them in the eye, shook their hand, and that ball got rolling. Um, so yeah, no, it, I, I had to hustle, but I, I just sort of knew you know, that, that intuition. I knew that even with my hustle, it was gonna be a minute. So taking that job as a teaching assistant got me working, kept me immersed in the material, kept me, you know, learning and absorbing information. 
And that way, even as I job hunted, I was progressing. So I didn't feel stagnant. I do know some people that do, through their job hunt, they feel like they, they grow stagnant in their skills. Um, and that's not something I had to really worry about. If you have the opportunity to be a teaching assistant for a brief time, especially if you're like me and you felt like you were sort of middle of the class, not top or bottom, but a great way to bump your knowledge up. Um, so we've covered a lot of things. Yep. <laughs> this has been quite the, um, there's going to be a lot of links with this one because we just couldn't dive into some of the more um, nuanced aspects of some of these um uh, you know, sort of areas, but wow, a lot goes into the boot camp, huh, Jen? Does most definitely. Uh, so, want to wrap things up for us? Yeah. So, if you uh, if you've decided a boot camp is for you, check out the links that we're offering with this. Take a minute to really consider your needs, your circumstance, what'll work for you. If you have any questions or roadblocks you just can't seem to figure out feel free to hit us up, contact us through the website. We'll do anything we can to help, but we wish you the best of luck, happy learning, and happy future career. Thanks, everybody.